In this video for volumes uh, four in our LP360 SUS uh, demonstration videos, we're going to review uh, bar pit analysis. This is where we're going to be comparing uh, two point clouds uh, and seeing how the uh, volume changes over time between those. Uh, it's very crucial that uh, the accuracy of your point clouds uh, is, is good and that uh, uh, in areas where uh, the surface is not changing between point clouds, they need to match up very well. So as long as that's occurring, you know, you're within maybe a tenth of a foot um, or uh, somewhere in that uh, area as far as the uh, point clouds matching up, uh, then you should be able to do a comparison and have good uh, results. So uh, let's, um, we have one point cloud already loaded. I'm going to go ahead and name that one. So you can see to rename this in the table of contents, all I'm doing is clicking on the layer, clicking again, and then you can uh, rename it whatever you'd like. So we'll say this is from a November, this data set. So let's go ahead and load the December data set. So I clicked on the Add Data button here at the top. Click on the Plus button. We're going to add our second data set. It's very important that you have a pin to compa compatible layers unchecked for this, OK? So we have that unchecked for both. I'm going to click OK. We're going to name this December LAS, and we'll name this one December Ortho. Okay. I'm going to move the LAS data sets together. By default, it's only going to show one LAS layer at a time. So watch as I click on the December LAS. Just waiting a second for the map to draw. Should uncheck the November LAS. Should show just the December LAS. The default settings, it should just show the points. Uh, it shouldn't be showing this uh, tinned view. We'll just give it one second here. OK. Let's go ahead and tin this data set so we can see what we're doing. I'm just clicking that drop down from the setting up here. Um, so uh, let's see how the volume changes for this area over time. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a shape file. So let's go, uh, this is, we're creating a feature layer from scratch. The Z value doesn't matter. Another video we're going to be going over all the feature edit tools and the settings, you know, auto Z, all that stuff is very important. Uh, for this point cloud task, we're just basically defining the boundary for us doing the, um, the uh, comparison of the surfaces over time. So um, let's go ahead and create a feature layer. Uh, it's very important you select the 3D polygon um, as the feature layer. Uh, the Z values of this are going to be uh, unimportant, but we still have to it, you still have to have that type of um, feature layer for this point cloud test to work properly because it's going to move that that polygon to the proper elevation so let's um, choose a spot to place it we'll just uh, place it in a folder called uh, volumes and we'll call it bar pit okay so you can see it automatically chose the layer name here. We're going to go ahead and click OK. So you can see it's showing up in my table of contents now. Now I can click on the Create Feature, and I can just create this feature from scratch. I'm just going to left click. <coughs> so it just told me that I don't have a uh, Auto Z conflation test chosen, so it's not going to be able to Auto Z this polygon. I don't care because for this point cloud task. 
Um, we're just going to turn that off. It doesn't matter what the um, Z value is. We still have to pick 3D Polygon as our type, but the Z value is irrelevant. So I'm just left clicking around this. Double left click to finish. All right, so we created our 3D Polygon. I'm going to click Save a feature that's up here. All right, so we've got our polygon for the area. We want to see the change detection of this, the volume here. I'm going to go to Point Cloud Task. I already have a volumetric analysis point cloud task here. <clears throat> I've created that in uh, one of our previous videos. So um, for our 3D polygon layer, let's change that to bar pit. Notice for type, I'm choosing shape layer. Okay, close. And uh, we want to choose the, for our base, uh, we're not going to do just polygon only now. We're going to uh, use LAS points and we want to choose that uh, earlier LAS, so the November LAS is going to be our, our base. Okay. Source points, if you've done some classification, you want to go ahead and change that now. Um, let's say that I've done some classification, I just wanted to run everything on uh, Create Never Classified, I could choose that now. Okay, just make sure that that LAS points is, is chosen. You got your November LAS here. All right, let's go to hole. Uh, we want to change this to December LAS. And for source points, I believe I had this one set to uh, created never classified. Okay, that's good. All right. So it should look something like this. You have your older uh, uh, point cloud as base, your newer one in the hole, volume, you want to do a cut minus fill. Alright, so that uh, means that um, if our <clears throat> if our fill value is greater than our cut value, our, our, our uh, that means we've lost material over time and our uh, value in the end is going to be negative. Um, and also I'll go ahead and click on the cut and fill volume so we'll have those as, as additional attributes so we can get a little bit better idea of what's going on um, in this area that we've chosen. Um, I'm chosen project path so that's basically where my LAS layers are coming from. Uh, we can go to file here, project settings, see where that project path is going to be. We can always change it. Let's say I wanted to change it to uh, to be at this top level here, BYOD training data, okay. And we're gonna uh, call that, uh, create a folder called volume and have, we'll call this uh, bar pit volumes. Okay, notice I have the dot SHP at the bottom or at the end and I have to set to overwrite. You could have to append if you want to do multiple um, um, run this multiple times and and uh, lasso different areas as you go along. <coughs> Let's go ahead and apply here. I also want to have a cut fill image so anywhere where this changes uh, either increases or decreases in volume more than uh, 0.1 meters it's going to uh, give me an illustration of that. So for cut that's areas where we've increased in volume, uh, fill areas where we've decreased in volume. Okay and let's put that uh, we have to set a location for this. We're just going to call it an image folder <coughs> and let's label it as um, uh, cut fill image. This is a .tiff file so make sure you do .tiff at the end. We're going to create a new file. Okay, Close, apply. Now let's go ahead. We're going to run this by project. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Yes, it's going to take just a second.
just depending on the size and the resolution of the surfaces, different variables. This will take different amounts of time to run. This should go pretty quickly here. All right, click OK. So these areas where you see the magenta color means we've decreased in volume. Areas where you see that cyan color is areas of increase, OK? So let's um, go to our table of contents tab, right click on bar pit volumes. It's the volume file we just created. Go to feature analyst. All right, so now we can see, so we have a negative number here, so we're saying we lost volume. Um, our cut is just those uh, cyan um, air areas that are colored in cyan. That's, that's where we've increased in volume. And so, and then the fill is just that total area you see in magenta. So that you basically, we're subtracting um, these numbers, and then we're going to get a negative number because we've lost uh, volume. Let's just do a quick sanity check here and see if that makes sense. I'm going to turn off the cut fill image. So this is our December LAS. Let's look at our November LAS one more time. You can see obviously there's a lot more material here so it makes sense that we lost um, uh, volume over time here. So that's how you would uh, compare point cloud surfaces and uh, see what the uh, change in volume is over time.